about okay guys today we're talking about what should your bushcrafting knife be able to do and for example we're going to be using the good old condor pterosaur now if you've just gotten yourself a bushcrafting knife or most importantly if you are thinking about getting yourself a bushcrafting knife what should that knife be able to do what should its tasks be able to do what should you be able to accomplish with that said tool and that's what we're answering in this video today and so when you go to look for a knife and when you have a knife or say you want to so you want to know, you know, like what should your bushcrafting knife be able to do? The basic fundamental tasks of a bushcrafting knife are all generalized camp living things. Uh, a lot of people might think or maybe mistake bushcrafting, you know, is more survival and say that, you know, oh, you have to be able to chop down trees with your knife. You have to be able to do very large tasks like build a shelter with your knife. And while there are certain times where being able to do those tasks, those larger tasks with a knife may prove to be useful, by and large, when it comes to building shelters, building larger crafts, such as walls like these, you're going to be doing those largely with saws, with axes, and with hatchets you're really not going to be using your knife for those larger tasks and this is even something that people like Nesmik and Kephart have talked about hundreds of years or maybe not hundreds but about hundred years ago so these are not necessarily new revelations to bushcrafting however there are a handful of simple tasks that you want to make sure that you can do and that your knife can do as well the first of those is going to be fire starting. Fire is an absolute key fundamental to camping, to bushcrafting, to survival, being able to stay warm, ward off bugs, cook food, and do all of those things revolve, all of those things revolve around heat, warmth, and a little bit of smoke. So being able to start a fire, whether that's striking a ferro rod, making feather sticks, batoning wood, um, all of those tasks really have to be condensed into fire starting or firecrafting in general. So you wanna make sure that you can properly strike a ferro rod off the back of your knife. You wanna make sure that it is sharp enough to do things like feather sticking and that it can do it reliably and that you can also, if you need to, do light field batoning, light camp batoning. This is where I think, you know, making toothpicks, making very small wood out of larger wood. So say you have, you know, a wrist thick tree can you take that rustic tree and make it down into toothpicks with your knife? That's where batoning is going to be most useful in bushcrafting as a whole. Now, yes, there are some other limited applications, but by and large, that's going to be the most common and most reasonable use of batoning. The other thing you're going to want to make sure that your knife can do is can it create tri sticks and netting needles now you may not ever need a netting needle but being able to make a tri stick and or netting netting needle will prove to you that not only your skills are good but that your knife is capable of fine tasks because making things like tri sticks or is a process where you just make a whole bunch of different notches and those notches may prove useful especially in things such as creating traps or doing things around camp. If you want to make a pot hanger latch or notch, it's important to know how to do that. It's important to know that your knife can do that. So creating a netting needle and creating a tri stick are things that your bushcrafting knife should be able to do. So the last one is can your knife process game? Once again, at some point, in your camping, you are going to have to eat, and one of the best ways to obtain food and nutrients is through the process of processing game animals. And you want to make sure that your knife is sharp enough, that it has the ability that you know it has the right shape, it has the right size to be able to hold in your hand very easily, that you can do close up fine work with that blade. Can you skin out an animal? Can you cut out the breasts of a grouse with a with your knife? If you can't do those types of tasks, then that knife is not going to be a very good knife. And this is why a lot of your larger blades fall short of realistic bushcrafting scenarios is because they can't do the small kind of finer tuned tasks of camp life and this is why something like a mora eldris might be more appropriate 
than a Cold Seal SRK uh, in when it comes down to bushcrafting because that Mora Eldris can certainly process game animals. In this example, I have the Condor, Condor Pterosaur, but it also is very capable of processing game animals, skinning them up, parting them out, you know, doing those types of tasks. Um, yeah. So that is the, the last real task that you want to make sure that your blade can do. And if your knife can make these different, so if your knife can make these different notches, start fires, and process game animals, then you are on the right track of a good solid bushcrafting blade. Whether it's made out of 1095, CPM 3V, S35 VN, you know, the materials don't necessarily matter as much as the capability of the blade. And once again, the price point doesn't matter as much as the capabilities of the blade. You want to make sure that you have a knife that can do the tasks that you need it to, not say that you have a very not to say not to say that you have a very expensive knife. So that is the biggest thing for a blade to look for when you're bushcrafting. So those are the tasks that you should be able to do with your bushcrafting blade. Um, if you can't do those things, consider getting a new blade or consider practicing your skills until you can with that blade. So as always guys, God bless and I'm out.